You can't see them or taste them, but there are more than 12,000 chemicals that could be lurking in your drinking water, causing everything from birth defects to cancer. I think people need to understand that all these chemicals will persist in our environment essentially forever. These chemicals are broadly known as PFAS, dangerous man-made toxins that never go away, found in everything from baby clothes and dog food packaging to nonstick cookware and dental floss. Currently, much attention is focused on drinking water as communities around the country are learning these hazardous chemicals can seep into their water supplies from industry discharge, landfills, airports, and military bases. So we decided to test what's coming out of taps, from suburban homes and city businesses to the halls of government. Bottle after bottle, we collected samples at 11 locations in Maryland, Virginia, and in Washington, D.C., including at the U.S. Capitol and the EPA, the very places critical decisions will be made about these chemicals. In nearly every case, including at the U.S. Capitol and the EPA, tests were positive for a type of PFAS known as PFHXA. That is unregulated in the U.S., but on the verge of being severely restricted in the European Union because of its harmful effects on the reproductive system. More than a third of our samples contained PFOA, universally viewed as one of the most serious PFAS chemicals. And in two of our tests in suburban Virginia homes, the levels of PFOA were more than 1,200 times higher than what the EPA is proposing as safe. We took what we found to Dr. Linda Birnbaum, the former director of the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences and one of the country's leading experts on PFAS. What's disturbing to you about the test results? That they're everywhere, that you're seeing these chemicals essentially everywhere. So the levels are low, which is the good news, but they're still there. One of the chemicals we detected that she was perhaps most concerned about is called PFHXS. We found it in the tap water of two Maryland homes. And that one really concerns me because there are growing amounts of animal and human data showing that PFHXS may be every bit as bad as, say, PFOS and PFOA, and it lasts in our bodies for a longer period of time. All PFAS accumulate in our bodies. The EPA says PFAS chemicals can affect the development of babies, impact the liver, kidneys, and immune system, and have been associated with certain cancers. This summer, the EPA proposed reducing the acceptable level of one of the most prevalent PFAS chemicals by more than 99.99%. The water that I was drinking that I thought was clean, was toxic and full of these chemicals. For years, marathoner Beth Marcasino drank huge amounts of her tap water. I ran with a camelback, which is like a backpack and has a large quantity of water. Did it ever occur to you that that water might be contaminated? Never, not in a million years, ever. Until her son Samuel died shortly after birth failing to develop a kidney or bladder, problems that some studies have linked to PFAS exposure, and Beth believes may be linked to the death of her son. But here I am today. I should have never have ever questioned that, that my water was the source that killed my son. She believes his death can be traced to massive quantities of PFAS chemicals that were dumped for three decades into the river that supplies drinking water to more than 300,000 Wilmington, North Carolina residents. But Wilmington isn't alone. By some estimates, 200 million Americans nationwide are likely drinking water polluted with these chemicals. We predicted that in the U.S. there's over 53,000 sites that have contamination. In fact, I think that we think that's a very conservative number and it's probably many more. In a first of its kind study, Dr. Birnbaum and colleagues mapped probable communities with high concentrations of PFAS chemicals. No state was spared and some regions were blanketed. How many people would you estimate in America have measurable exposure to PFAS? I think almost everybody. Whether you have PFAS in your tap water depends on where you live. Most states have not adopted limits, 
leaving the most likely regulation to come from the EPA, which told us it hopes to have a national regulation with enforceable PFAS limits in place by the end of next year. Wilmington, North Carolina is now successfully reducing PFAS in the water, but it took five years and taxpayers footing the bill for a hard-fought $43 million water treatment plant upgrade. I hope that nobody else in America has to endure the same loss that I do. But I believe that with enough fight and enough effort, we can stop these chemicals from being produced. That's what I'm gonna do because my daughter and other families deserve this. Our team wanted to take this one step further, so we tested nearly two dozen top brands of bottled water from across the country. The good news? Every sample we took came back with no detectable levels of PFAS. For Spotlight on America, I'm Lisa Fletcher.